Hi, it's Mark from Cyfox Studios and welcome to another Logic tutorial. Today we're going to look at part two of our Space Designer tutorial and we're going to check out how we can use it as an EQ. In part one, we checked out how we can use it as a reverb and we went through a lot of the controls in quite big detail. So please check out part one if you haven't already. Well, let's go and have a look at how we can use it as an EQ. So part two takes off from where part one left. And in part one, we were using the uh, Space Designer plugin on an AUX send because we were wanting to create reverbs. But now because we want to create an EQ, I want to make sure that we don't have a dry signal and a wet signal in the same way. So I'm actually gonna start to load up Space Designer on our original channel strip, okay? So let's close down the one that we have running on the send, no plugin, and that is now gone. We can turn off the bus, and if we go into our plugin section, or if audio effects, we can go Space Designer, because I've already used it, it's now in the recent, but obviously if you haven't and you're just entering this tutorial for the first time, it's in Reverb and down in Space Designer. And once again, I'm gonna go for the stereo option, and uh, here we go, so. As default, it loads up as a reverb, and because we've loaded it on the channel strip, the dry is now set up to be at the top. All right, if we roll that dry down, we just hear the reverb. If I increase the pre-delay, you'll hear that nothing happens, and then we get the sound, okay? I'll make that a little bit longer, so it's a little bit more noticeable. Okay, so it's like you've got latency, really, but there we go. That is what's happening there. I'm going to bring that pre-delay right back down to zero. And we still have a reverb, but we want to turn it into an EQ. So obviously we want to change the length, so we're going to bring that down, and we're now starting to not hear any reverb. And we can start to sculpt using the output EQ that we have over here. Now, the... EQ, very simply, you turn on and you can bring this up. And if we change into 12 dB per octave, then we can change that EQ uh, options. And we have that there. Now, I realize that um, what I've just done basically is using a reverb plugin as an EQ. And the EQ segment of the reverb plugin is very much like a usual EQ plugin that you have in Logic. I totally get that. Um, this is not 100% what I want to be showing you right now, but I wanted to show that it's possible to do with the output EQ. Now, the reason why I want to do this tutorial for you is because you can load IRs, and you can load IRs of particular, let's say, um, devices or sounds that have a selection of frequencies in that you can then apply to your, your mix. Let's say you want to go for a megaphone sort of sound, okay? Now, obviously, you can go in and you can dial your EQs there. You can probably dial the EQs into an EQ, but you can use the IR options as well. So, let's go and we'll just go into load IR and initialize, and I'm gonna use the initialize because I want to remove those EQ settings that I just had a second ago. And we shall therefore start searching through the IRs that we find in the Apple system, okay? So Logic comes with a lot of IRs, and I want to show you where they are. So we have uh, rooms is what it's by default come in. I'm just gonna go into Apple, okay? So you can see we have a selection six here of uh, warped instrument profiles, large spaces, medium spaces, small spaces, and surround spaces. We're gonna go into warped, and in warped, we get speakers. So these are speaker IRs. Very, very cool, very, very useful. And uh, we can just take a look through what we're actually seeing. And we've got small megaphone in here, small, tiny white earbuds. I wonder which ones they are. Um, but we can uh, go for, let's say, a small megaphone. And there we go. You can see because uh, I initialized it, the uh, small megaphone uh, IR has been loaded and the EQ window that we were on has been nullified. Uh, the volume curve is plain and uh, as long as the dry is set down to the bottom, we will not be hearing the original signal. So in the way that I am thinking about this, I think by simply doing small megaphone, we should now have the EQ done for a small megaphone. So let's hear what it sounds like. So the original tone would be turning off the space designer, turning on the space designer. 
That is a small megaphone, not quite as notchy as I was kind of hoping. So we'll go and load IR and we're still in the speakers. Uh, we have a circuit bent megaphone. Okay. Now that, that is more the kind of thing I was expecting. So you can have, obviously go through, you could even take uh, audio files that you like the frequency responses of and you can apply those to other noises just by loading the audio file um, and getting some wonderful things. Obviously if you have any rhythmic elements in it you're going to start changing those as well. So some very very cool little things that you can be doing purely by using Space Designer as an EQ. If you're interested in finding out how we can uh, make Space Designer work for us as a speaker simulator, check out part three. That's where we're about to go in a minute. But uh, I've been Mark Suffolk Studios. Remember, we have a load more tips and tricks guides and tutorials on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe. Please write a comment in the comment section below. It'd be wonderful to hear from you. And please, please give this video a thumbs up. Like I say, I'm Mark, Saffrock Studios. See you later.